Hello there. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to your 15 minutes of fume. I'm Tom. I'm Galen. And today, we are inviting you to join our book club. Come on! <laughs> BPAL has a venerable tradition of adapting books into perfume. Wouldn't you say? I would say that. Venerable. Going back oh so many centuries. And uh, unfortunately, COVID halted a lot of our plans. We were already behind schedule on bringing uh, several cool new adapted projects into the sunshine for you to smell. This one, uh, Dead Blondes and Bad Mothers, we've been working on quite a while. Sadie Doyle. Durner. Sadie, we know you're watching. We have your perfumes. <laughs> Do you have the new ones yet? Did we send them to you? You don't have to answer me here. Uh, anyway, uh, we're very excited. Uh, this book came out last August. And in classic Be Pal fashion, we managed to get the perfumes released this August. When it's miraculous that we were able to release anything at all. Uh, a lot of incredible projects have been completely sidelined. This one managed to surface and the world will never be the same. So we're going to review four of these today. It's an eight perfume collection. We have four of them right here, right now. Um, the book, Dead Blondes and Bad Mothers, Monstrosity, Patriarchy, and the Fear of Female Power. I mean, there's a mouthful right there. It's a wonderful book. It's a wonderful book that explores um, mythology and history and pop culture and probes for the various archetypes associated with women and femininity and shows the way that they have been used to frighten people into conformity and submission, but also in the ways that these are gradually subverted or maybe embraced or used to reclaim Aspe aspects of feminine power, uh, including monstrous forms of feminine power, um, that uh, who knows uh, what can be accomplished when these are unleashed. It's like all my favorite things in one book. I yeah. read it in like two days. Talks Throws about up on the couch like we talk great. about slasher movies, uh, Laura Palmer, um, you know Margaret White, serial killers. <laughs> Mama Gein? <laughs> yeah, it's got a little bit of everything, and it's just an incredibly well-researched and thoughtfully constructed And book. entertaining. Oh, very entertaining. And um, Sadie includes a lot of their own personality and, you know, pet obsessions and concerns throughout. So, you know, there it's just the, it's the whole package. Sadie also wrote Trainwreck, uh, The Women We Love to Hate, Mock, and fear and why. So it's kind of a investigation into the cultural phenomenon of the Britney Spearses, the Amy Winehouses, the train wrecks that we become fascinated by and how this is not a new phenomenon but mm -hmm. one that is just a you know strangely recurring tradition and uh, it's just a great book to send to the train wreck in your own life and be like you know see there is a place for you in this world. We know who you are. We love you, and we're very worried. Let's dive into the sentence. <laughs> We've only got 15 minutes. So, yes, that's a very good reminder. So the very first one that we have to cover is Possessed Teen. <gasps> Everyone loves a Possessed Teen archetype. So here you got your, um, your Regan, your um, various... Who are other Possessed Teens? Name a Possessed Teen. Wasn't someone else ex exercised? Jennifer Check, I don't know. Emily Rose? <laughs> oh, her. Yeah, you know, like... We're just uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We, um. We're very worried about the young women on the threshold of womanhood, and like the terrifying powers it unleashes and the demonic forces that it makes them susceptible to. So, you know, why not have a perfume uh, that smells exactly like this? Yeah. Uh, so, what the lab has concocted, the scent notes for possessed teen are skin musk and soap, smoldering with ash and exorcism incense. I welcome the dead into my soul. You know? Hmm. <laughs> it really has that beautiful, like, light, clean, fresh... This is a, a well-scrubbed, wholesome American teen. And yes... She's got something wrong with her. There is a smolder. <laughs> I'm curious to see on the skin 
which of the forces will win out, the forces of good or the forces of evil, mm -hmm. to the extent that they are distinguishable. I like it. It's nice and clean, and there is something underneath all that cleanliness. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> this is cleaner than I have smelled in months. I mean, it really is kind of like... Uh, exactly as I expected it would be. Mm -hmm. I kind of thought it might be smokier, but that could happen on the skin, so mm -hmm. we'll get there. Cool. Cool. So it's worth noting that on the website, each of these perfume blends is accompanied by a pithy quote from the text that kind of puts the scent in context with um, everything that Sadie writes about in the book. And so with Dead Blonde, we have like a nice little, uh, it's all the chapter related to slasher movies. For example, a wilting corsage of tea roses and white roses bearing forensic traces of honeyed lip gloss and coconut oil suntan lotion. It's like I watched so many of these movies in the 90s that I actually am instantly transported just by the description alone. Yeah. You got your Sarah Michelle Gellar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Barry! You got your, yeah, you got your Laura Palmer. Oh, wow. I mean, this is exactly what I would imagine Laura Palmer to smell like. Especially because it's kind of sophisticated, and it reminds me about how these characters in the movies are often, like, more adult than any teen that you've ever really met. Like, they've got this, like, kind of world-weary sophistication. It also helps that they're, you know, actually 25. Right, of course, of course. <laughs> but, like, the character is painted as if, like, already just, like, knowing too much or having access to just, like, a, a sensibility that is inappropriate for their age, yeah. which comes from the way that people, especially men, treat young women who they view as attractive, and it's like they just, you're included in the adult club, you know? So there is actually something really um, mature about this scent. The, the, it's, there's a really green component, which must be the corsage, this mm -hmm. kind of like vegetal must, and the rose is delicate. It's kind of like... Unlike some of the ones that we've been going through the general catalog lately that are, like, screaming with roses. This is definitely more wilted. I love it. It really yeah. has that dead prom corsage smell. I'm kind of relieved to note that the suntan lotion is not a bold statement. No, there's just, the like, there's, like, that hint of coconut smell. This is one of the few scents that actually has lip gloss as, like, a scent note. And the idea of, like, makeup as a fragrance is just in inspiring to me. I'm yeah. like, this is what you want a perfumery in the 21st century to be doing is like, oh, it's actually perfume that smells like cosmetics. It has almost like an, a crisp apple or something to it in there. There's something interesting that's got a little bit of a bite. Next, we're going to Alien slash Siren. The Alien Siren scent is about like how just being a woman is othering in a way to where you're seen as some kind of like other entity. And uh, the scent totally um, encapsulates that idea. It says, a sebaceous, slick, reptilian perfume. Green and black vegetal musks, kelp, sea salt, blackened apopanax, violet leaf, Siamese red benzoin, divana, squid ink, and ambergris accord. Oh. Ooh. Boy, there's nothing sweet in this bottle. Whoa. Well, I mean, there is benzoin. I guess, but... It's gonna pop out. Maybe somewhere. Right now, it just has kind of an oil spill smell to me. It's like, uh, it reminds me of, uh, what is it, Under the Skin? Yeah. With yeah. Scarlett Johansson, where she, uh, in, in one of her few non-Asian roles, uh, where she plays an alien who's, like, luring men into this, like, weird digestive chamber that's, like, inky black. That's what this smells totally, like Totally. To totally. It's the pure darkness, and it does have some, like, weird, squishy, vegetal action happening. The fact that there is a squid ink note in this is just mind-bending to me. Wow, dark and like musky and salty. Yes, it is salty. <laughs> it is dark and musky and salty. Um, reptilian and mean is that fascinating. all in like the best way possible. I once lived in a gay boarding house that had an iguana room that was home to actual iguanas. And this is like what I wish it had smelled like. Yeah, we all know what it actually smells like. If you've ever been to a pet store and you've looked at the iguanas, you yeah. know what that smells like. Right, right. And then the last one for this particular video is Bluebeard's wife. Remember her? We've Do all been there. Do not open that door. Especially nowadays that we're all trapped together, if you're in a relationship at all. Like, we all have our, our the Bluebeard room somewhere. Um, Bluebeard's wife, uh, if you're not familiar with the story, Bluebeard's wife was welcomed to have her 
free roaming of the household except for the door at the end of the hall. Is mm -hmm. that right? Something like that. And you know what happened. You know, because you would do the same thing. And then... I've it, known since I was a kid, so you better know. Inside the room, um, all of the Christmas presents that he was uh, hiding from her, and she ruined the surprise. Oh, well, that's the really G-rated <laughs> <laughs> the scent is <laughs> red rose petals floating in brackish salt water. So this is a two, like, salty mm -hmm. blends. <sighs> Ooh. Yeah. It is very it is very salt watery. It's not a, a, a really strong rose water blend in the bottle. It really smells like tears to me. Because it's, like, it's warm, you know? Mm -hmm. Wow. So this is, like, a very sheer floral aquatic. Mm -hmm. which I guess anyone who read the description would in innately understand. There's something really strange about smelling it, though. It really smells like a uh, like I'm in the bath. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe because of that, it's like it has this like isolation to it, which I think is really interesting. All right. Well, shall we try all of these on? Yeah. We need like um, a wipe where it's like... We'll have to wipe. <laughs> all right. Are you ready to get monstrous? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, duh. Look where you are. Um, shall we sniff a possessed teen? Yes. Ooh, so that soap right off the bat seems to have been cut down considerably. It's not as clean as it was in the bottle. It's spicier and sootier on the skin for me. Like that incense is definitely coming through. Yeah. On me, it still smells pretty clean. I'm getting the musk. But I'm getting, yeah, and I'm getting the other stuff more. And ash. And the soap, which is good, because honestly, I have soap. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I mean, I have all of these things. But this is much more like what I would want to kind of carry around. It has, like, a, it has mystery. There's nothing really mysterious about a soap smell. There's something, okay, so maybe it's just these four, but there's something really sad about all of them. All of them. <laughs> it's, oh, I love this totally. collection because it's, so strange and we don't always get to be super strange even in some of the the great collections we do there's something like comforting or exciting or or happy or connects to some incredible memory these are like they're there's like an innate heaviness mm -hmm. to the subject matter i don't know i just love this i do too <laughs> yeah it's that carrie white shower That's also so <laughs> many it is it is and so many of our incense blends are so bombastic because of the drama of church and mm. gothicness and so forth <laughs> and this is really like um definite like teen goth territory um which i would love to um wear because i didn't get to do a lot of teen goth stuff the way everyone else did like other kids at my school were like breaking open pens and rubbing the ink into their gums and i was just like what if I cut a hole in my shirt? Wow, well, you're doing the w way more safe version. You should not be rubbing ink into your gums. I know, I know, but it was That's so cool. Stupid. It made the grown-ups very upset. So with that, should we move on to the dead blonde? Okay. Okay. This is glamorous. This is taking me right back to the mall. But it's kind of like how in the horror movies, like, the girl's always at the mall by herself. Right. You know, <laughs> instead of with her friends. Yeah. She's so lonely. It's a lonely smell. It is. It has a real gloom to it, which I admire. When you look at the notes, that's so funny because you think, like, perfect teen princess. Um, this is that perfect teen princess with all of the secrets. Wow. And it really does have this, like, in really incredible, like, womanhood scent to it that I can't really describe. Like, all of this is just, like, hovering in the background. Are you getting the apple that I mentioned earlier? Because yeah. I'm getting some kind of apple. There is like there is some kind of apple in there. Interesting. <laughs> wow. It's just like really soft. It's making me really sad. Um, <laughs> have you been to the, the beach on a cloudy day? You know, it's like that kind of situation. The roses are kind of. It's not. It's not like a heavy rose. It's a more light rose. Everything is kind of just light and sort right. of sad, ethereal kind of. You know. You know when you get into a pretty girl's car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can smell, like, whatever product has been, like, stored in the car. Mm -hmm. there, it's, like, that kind of, like, vapor. Yeah. Me. The blend of, like, the coconut air freshener and, like, the smell of her shampoo. I don't get to, like, <laughs> have that experience very often anymore. I don't ride around with a lot of people. Everyone that I know smells like Beepel. <laughs> now we're moving on to Alien Siren. 
which might be the only perfume you will ever wear with sebaceous in the description. There is something kind of like sticky or dare I say greasy about it. Mm -hmm. It does, ha it's like that same, it hasn't changed that much from the bottle. It's just kind of like pers personal now. It's like you just want to pull the covers over your head and stay there, except for the covers are like the entire Baltic Sea. I love that ambergris accord. It really kind of brings it into um, like a decadent place instead of just uh, like a squirming, frightening, rotten place. And I actually think that I can smell the violet leaf. Is that crazy in the midst of all of there? Like the, the, the um, vegetal scents that uh, are listed do actually manifest. Yeah. So if someone was smelling this on you, they might not get all of this. It might just be kind of like a dark green smell. It kind of reminds me of the sinkhole perfume that we made, inspired by the sinkhole in the White House. That's lawn. what it is. Because I was trying to, yeah, there was, it was lighting up some familiar spot. And I'm like, what is this reminding me of? That was more earthy. Yes. This Whereas is this more is oceanic. oceanic. So like, don't be frightened, but also don't invest unless you really enjoy aquatics or are like, want to know summon an elder god i do like there's this like air of like a delicate fr fragility i think because of the violet leaf and the musk and maybe the benzoin that kind of like does has like a perfumey flourish mm -hmm. you know which i think tethers it to like woman as alien slash siren i can see this on the skin especially because of the musks just kind of gradually sweetening you know until it's um indistinguishable from a regular human mm -hmm just like all of the reptile reptile people, so. Really fascinating. And then yeah. last for this issue, and pardon if you can hear the hammering from the neighbors getting their roof retiled, is Bluebeard's Wife, which is the rose petals floating in the brackish salt water. So the rose is out a little more for me. The rose is out and the salt has calmed down, but it is more of a like watery rose for sure. Yeah. Not like. It's not a rose not water. salty like the alien though. Yeah. It helps to have them side by side because the outdoor, the alien one is more like outdoor salt water. This is more like indoor salt water. Mm -hmm. Luxurious bath. Yeah. So it's like, um, it is fresh, but it does have a gloom to it, of course. Yeah. Uh, anything that kind of dims the power of a rose kind of imparts its own sort of gloom. The rose petals here feel um, kind of muddled. I mean that in the like literal sense like if you were making a mojito, but like with the roses and salt water. She just has to take a bunch of baths in order to stave off the curiosity of what the hell is in that closet? Yes. Imagine, I, all I can think of is all the years I spent living in New York where like imagine that you even have like an extra closet. It's so funny because the quote here from Sadie's book says, like the slashers, um, it's talking about Bluebeard stories, like the slashers, they convert private drama into public spectacle, giving women a language for their pain. And I just think the private drama is what really stands out here in this set because mm -hmm. it really seems like a behind closed doors kind of yeah set. Yeah. Secret single behaviors for those Sex and the City fans. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. These videos truly go all over the place. <laughs> when we sit down, we never really know what's going to happen. So there are four more of these scents for us to review, and we can't do it in 15 minutes, but we're going to release this video and we have more coming out. We do finally have September Lunacy to review, and there's more tournament happening all the time. Uh, Sadie, thank you for letting us uh, do this. Um, thank you for the incredible read, and we hope that people are checking out this book and gradually slathering themselves in oils reminiscent of frightening archetypes yeah. related to systemic misogyny and historical trauma. That's what we're here for. So I gotta smell that dead blonde again. I'm comfortable leaving it with that. Bye everyone. <laughs> <laughs>